Congressman Ro Khanna. Congressman Khanna, thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. I know that day has left its mark on you. Um, my apologies for asking you to relive it. But describe the moment when you thought you might not make it out of the Capitol. Well, I was in this office uh, where I'm sitting today, and we first heard that there was a bomb threat, and we all evacuated the Cannon Building. I started walking towards the uh, actual Capitol, and then my phone was flooded saying, the Capitol is being invaded, go back to your office. And so I scrambled, we went back uh, to the Cannon Building, I went to my office, even though there was still a live bomb threat, uh, closed my doors, locked the doors, and then was here uh, until midnight. Uh, when the speaker finally called us out uh, and uh, to certify the results. And I just am very grateful to the Capitol Police and everyone who uh, kept, uh, kept us safe. Looking at these images, still horrifying a year later. But since then, has there been an awakening, you think, that our democracy needs to be protected? Or are things worse than ever? There has been an awakening. I mean, one thing we can take solace from is that our system worked. I mean, ultimately, that very day, uh, we certified the results, President Biden and Kamala Harris as the president and the vice president, uh, that they are now uh, in office, that the Capitol Police has really increased uh, the ability to have security so that something like this never happens uh, again. But I'm disheartened that there are still so many Republicans who are unwilling uh, to condemn what happened. I mean, you can say that some people came there for legitimate protests, fine, and that there were some bystanders who got caught up. But anyone who is watching this should know that there were hundreds, thousands of people who came with the goal of inflicting violence. And I don't understand how every American congressperson and senator doesn't condemn that. Well. I mean, your GOP colleagues did not, for the most part, attend today's ceremonies, right? The exception being Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who's a Trump critic, who's been ostracized by her own party. Her father, former Vice President Dick Cheney, uh, who served under George W. Bush, was there. Um, look, today, President Biden laid the blame on the former president. Are there new revelations with regard to Mr. Trump's actions a year ago that you think the public should be aware of? Just how widespread his effort was to overturn the election. I used to think this was just something in... President Trump's mind, but there were PowerPoint presentations shared with 20 to 30 of his senior members where there was a systematic plan to try to get state legislatures and governors to overturn the election results where President Biden had won in Arizona and Georgia to say that they were fraudulent and send a competing slate of electors. And it's scary how uh, much of that effort there was and how many people in the Trump administration were involved with it. Many Californians may not be paying close attention because it feels so far away from us. But those who deny the election results, um, just like the protesters, rioters who were there that day, are now actually running for political offices nationwide, aren't they? They are. And I, I think every person who runs for office should be asked a simple question. Do you believe Joe Biden is the legitimately elected president? And do you believe that the insurrectionists were wrong to threaten violence against American democracy? And if they can't answer those two questions satisfactorily, I don't understand how they can represent uh, anyone in the United States Congress or Senate or, or hold political office uh, by in the confidence and trust of, of their citizens. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I should mention is that voting rights um, are being curtailed in many states right now in legislatures. And I wonder if today's events um, suggest a particular course of action that you think we need to take. This has to be our highest priority. It's my highest priority. I mean, the, the year is 2022. We can't have a country where everyone doesn't have an equal right to vote. And in state after state, they're denying people the right to register on the same day, to cast absentee ballots. They know that this is going to impact uh, black uh, Americans, Latino Americans, young Americans. It, all we're asking for is that every person have an equal vote. We need to pass the Voting Rights Act. Uh, we need to put, uh, make, put that on the floor, have the senators vote on it every day if we have to. Uh, but let's get actual votes on these bills. 
there are some who think that President Biden's comments today may only divide further. I mean, certainly former President Trump is saying that. Um, and there are others who said he needed to say what he wanted to say or had to say today to set up the Voting Rights Act to, to gain more support for it, including any potential changes to Senate and the filibustering rules. Um, is that what this is about, you think? I think President Biden spoke from his heart. I think he came into office wanting to be a unifier, wanting to heal the country, wanting to get past the division. And I remember after January 6th, uh, even Kevin McCarthy was condemning what happened. McConnell was condemning what happened. So many Republicans spoke out against it. But what we've seen over now? the year, because they fear primary challenges. They don't want Trump to endorse a candidate who uh, runs against them. I mean, let's just be candid. That's what's going on. They're fearful that they may have a primary challenge or and not be in the good graces of Trump. And, you know, I was wrong. I thought after January 6th, Trump was done. Trump is stronger today in the Republican Party than he's ever been. So what we see is politics going on. And I think President Biden understands that for us to unify the country, we first have to defeat uh, the, 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 the forces that aren't willing to condemn violence. I mean, we're not talking about anything that difficult here. We're saying just condemn the people who attacked the Capitol. A senior law enforcement official tells ABC News that in the 48 hours leading up to today's anniversary, uh, intelligence analysts have been seeing a concerning increase in online chatter urging people to attack members of Congress. Is that true? Have you been warned of that? We've been warned to be more vigilant, to have greater security. Uh, but unfortunately, we live at a time where there are increasing threats uh, against people in public service. And it's sad because our country was founded on the principle that we don't believe in violence to solve political disagreements. Uh, and whether you're a Republican watching, a Democrat, an independent, whether you want to vote for me or against me, vote for the president or against the president, I hope we can just all come together around this principle that there is no place, no place for violence in American society and in American politics. After traumatic events, oftentimes the rallying cry is never again. Do you think what happened a year ago today could never happen again? I hope so. I think we're better prepared. I think our police uh, offices, officers are doing an extraordinary job. Uh, but ultimately, in a democracy, uh, the decision is with the citizenry. And really, what we need is for Americans to tear, uh, to figure out how we uh, heal some of the tears in, in, in our body politics. Thank you so much. Don't go away. We'll continue on Facebook Live. Take a short break.